Good morning and welcome to the Jordan District Football League Netball Show. The only netball show in the entire country. Uh, and for you people wondering out there, what's happened to Megan? No, she hasn't had an extreme makeover. Uh, she's actually up in Sydney this weekend having a, a photo shoot with a, a prominent men's magazine or so, I believe. Uh, now, moving right along, uh, of course, uh, introduce you to Felicity from the Winchell Sea Netball Club. Uh, Felicity, how are you this morning? Good morning. Well, thank you. I think you've uh, stirred a bit of something there after the anger management courses last week and wow. then Megan in a men's magazine next week. I think I won't be having a week off or some rumours will be started. Yes, well, maybe next week when I come to the show, I might uh, bring some security with me <laughs> uh, just to protect me from something that may happen. Fair enough. <laughs> um, and uh, this morning also, we've got a couple of uh, special guests in from the Bellpost Hill Netball Club. Uh, first of all, we have Emma Harty with us. How are you, Emma? I'm good, thank you. That's you? good. <laughs> Up nice and early this morning? Yes, very early. A bit cold this morning? It is very cold and, and a little rainy. Bit, <laughs> a little bit wet as well. And also next to Emma, we've got Amanda Grant. Uh, Amanda, affectionately known as G Up at the Hill. Uh, Amanda was a former uh, panel member on the show uh, a few years ago. Amanda, how are you this morning? Good morning, Bertie. I'm good, thank you. That's good to hear. How's you and the boys? They're really good, and thanks for asking. And Felicity, if you want any dirt on Bertie, you know where to go. Oh, for sure. Are we taking that up? Yeah. Felicity, if you believe there's any dirt on me, you have to be dreaming. Yeah. But anyway, we'll, we'll move right along with the show. Uh, this week's uh, games, we had some interesting results, uh, very interesting results actually. The first game that was played uh, was North Geelong uh, and Geelong West. Um, the result was 50 uh, North Geelong, 19 Geelong West. Uh, probably not a real surprise there, Felicity, I think. No. Um, North Geelong are on song at the moment. Yeah, we were talking about that um, last week as well, that North Geelong are looking pretty well, good and strong at this stage. They they have uh, very smart shooters, so um, I think they're, they're up there this year again. So it's a good scoring game there, though. So, mm. Mm. Absolutely. Um, you know, 50, 50 goals. And, I mean, over the years, well, when I was coaching uh, at Belpost Hill, we had always had, uh, I think, Amanda, you can remember some clashes. Even before I was at the Hill, there was no love lost there between... Uh, Belpost still in North Geelong, I think, and it was uh, pretty much. Uh, a no, they're very experienced stu- um, shooters who've always played together, and they've they've got it. They've got the systems down perfect, and they're very hard to defend. Mm. I think uh, Emma, you play North Geelong. Uh, I'm not sure when, maybe three or four weeks time, and yeah. you'll be looking at trying to contain uh, their goalers. Yeah, uh, definitely. We've got um, Sunanu Robertson down there now at the club, and she's definitely. Um, changed up our defence then, so it's going to be an interesting challenge to see her line up on Kelly, and it's going to be exciting. And, of course, Amanda, you're in defence uh, for Belpost Hill as well, so uh, playing in the A grade uh, again this year? Yeah, I've been given another bib this year, which is pretty exciting for the old girl, um, but with the recruit of Sonny Robertson, like um, Emma said, it, it's, it, she's had quite an impact and makes my job a little bit easier. For sure, for sure. Um, moving on, uh, Inverley and Belmont Lions. Inverley recording a win by five goals there uh, against Belmont. Uh, 40-35 was the final score. Belmont, what's going on with Belmont? They've fallen by the wayside after a promising start against uh, Belpost Hill uh, in round one. Then they only went down by a couple of goals there. But they've just um, lost the plot big time, I think. They've just lost three. Um, I really haven't got any explanation. We'll probably have to wait until... We get someone in from Belmont and, and find out what's happened down there. I've heard a few girls may have left the club, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure. And uh, I think with Sarah DeGrandy maybe not playing in the last couple of weeks takes a bit out of their goaling uh, circle as well. So, um, yeah, I think uh, Belmont will be wanting to try and put a win on the board sooner or later. And, um, yeah, the going is a little bit hard up there uh, at, uh, at Belmont at the moment. East Geelong... And Bell Post Hill. Yes. <laughs> uh, a draw. 54 all uh, after uh, 60 minutes of netball on the weekend. Uh, I actually went up there for a quarter. I was planning on going there for a quarter and I was going to go in and watch Karai and Werribee play the majority of their game. But come quarter time, where um, uh, Bell Post Hill are 11 or 12 goals down at quarter time. Emma, what happened? Well, uh when Terry was on the show, he explained our new, uh, a new rule that's come into the club, which is basically um, if you don't train, don't expect to start on a Saturday. And um, unfortunately, we didn't get a couple of girls down at training and he implemented that rule on Saturday. And, uh, you know, we started with 
quite an unfamiliar combination on the court and a very young a very young side as well so it, yeah it was just a matter of trying to use that in a very high pr pressure situation so and it, it didn't really come off but we managed to creep back, but not quite far enough. Well, you did, um, you know, from being 11 or 12 down, you were only three down at half time um, when the uh, Samoan girls came back onto the court. Uh, two down at, at quarter time, at three quarter time. You actually, at one stage in that second half, got in front by three goals, yeah. but you just couldn't quite hold on to that lead. Amanda, why couldn't you hold on to lead? Why couldn't you go forward and run over the top of Belmont? Um, if, I, if I knew the answer to that, we would have for a start. Um, it was an interesting game. I think with the impact of um, our full strength side not being on the court for the first quarter and having to fight it back 12 goals, that was a really intense quarter, the second quarter. And I, I honestly don't know why we couldn't, couldn't lift it and just create those couple of extra turnovers and, and finish the game off. And that was disappointing from a, a club point of view and yeah. from a, a team point of view. It was it was a win we were or a win we were expecting to take at the end of the day. Absolutely, uh, and I'm, you know you walked away with two points now instead of four points, and probably come the end of the season it may you know you may pay the penalty for that draw. Mm. Uh, but if that's the um, the policy that the coaches implemented down there, well then that I suppose that's what all the girls have to live with, and mm, yep. they've all agreed to it. Yeah. And so. all credit to East Geelong too. They they came to play on the day and they they chased everything down. They're 110 percent at the ball, and you know we had to work really really hard. It was no, by no means an easy game. So mm. East Geelong, and from the results last week where East Geelong beat Belmont Lions, mm. were a little we were sort of as a club thinking, oh gosh, you know, because we looked at Belmont the week before and they looked like a really good side and a really competitive side. East Geelong have, have made some good recruits to the to the year and are looking looking the goods as well so all credit mm. to them as well now with 108 points between the both sides it mm. must have been a very fast scoring game um mm. how did defensive ends both hang up with that um very tiring of course with the amount of goals being shot there mm. but um must have been that's a lot of goals to be scored 108 mm. in 60 minutes that's well, a lot of goals it poses the question was there any defense there I mean, yeah. Amanda, what were you doing all game? Maybe we just had a rest. My <laughs> God. More than quarter, 100 the goals. The last quarter of the game was definitely very interesting. Mm. Um, the pace did drop off a lot, but um, very accurate shooting as well in the last quarter. So it was very much an attacking game. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll just um, we'll come back to you girls a bit later on with that game. Uh, we'll just quickly touch on uh, Werribee and Corio. Uh, this final score there, Werribee 57 and Corio 31. Uh, you know, I think Werribee have come in um, after their grand final loss last year, Flick, and they're just you know, coming down for business now. They certainly are. They always are. But I think this year, uh, in all grades, I'll be pushing for, for a win again. So um, they're, they're definitely up there with it all um, again. I see that um, they're actually on top in the A grade ladder at the moment. So um, they're a very tight unit, as we've said before. So. Good, good games to watch. All right, we'll just uh, take a quick break and we'll be back with the remainder of the games in just a moment. I'm here to tell you how football is strong. 